Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to display the week of the year in Microsoft Access. Okay, so a lot of times, especially in accounting type reports, you have to display the week number of the year. Is it week two? Is it week 52? Is it week 53? Yeah, that happens. Like every five or six years, you get a, a week with 53 a year with 53 weeks in it. I think 2017 was one and 2023 will be one. So it happens. It's not always just 52. But anyways, how do we display that number in Microsoft Access? Well, let's take a table like order T. We've got an order date here. I want to know what week of the year that order fell in. Okay, so let's make a query. Create query design. Now you can put this in a query. You can put this in a form. You can put this in a report. You could put this in your VBA code. It works pretty much everywhere. But let's put it in a query first. That's the easiest place to do it. All right, bring in the order T. That's my order table. I'm going to bring in my order ID and the order date. And I'm going to make a calculated query field to display the week number. If you don't know what a calculated query field is, go watch this video. And I'll show you all about it. So down here, I'm going to put my calculated query field. We're going to call this week of year. Week of year. No spaces, of course colon and i'm going to zoom in so you guys can see me better shift f2 that zooms us in okay so what are we going to do to put the week number of the year in well we're going to use a function called date part date part lets you pull any piece of a date out you can pull out the day you can pull out the year you can pull out the month you can pull out the seconds because remember a date value is also date and time but you can also pull out the week number of the year pretty cool you can also pull out the quarter all kinds of stuff I got a whole separate video just on date part if you want to learn all those different aspects of it, like the year, the quarter, the month, all that stuff. So go watch this. It's free. It's on my YouTube channel. you find a link down below you can click on. But in today's video, we're going to focus just on the week of the year part of it. Okay, so date part, and then open parenthesis, and then inside of quotes, WW. That tells the date part function what part of the date you want. Now, WW is the week of the year. W by itself is the day of the week. So be careful. Now, where did I find this information? On Microsoft's website, of course. All right, there's the date part function. Scroll down here. Okay, date part interval is the part we're asking about right now. Here's all the different interval parts, right? Four Ys for the year, because Y is the day of the year, right? One through 365, 366, really. Okay, just like down here. W is the weekday, one through seven. WW is the week number, just like N is minute because M is month. All right, so you got to follow these codes exactly. All right, so that's got to be WW, WWW. Remember how stupid it used to be in commercials when the when the web was first taken off and you'd hear it? Go to my website at WWW. Oh, my God, I used to hate that. It used to annoy me. Uh, but now everyone just knows. Go to 599cd.com, right? Okay, so uh, what's next? Well, next is the field that you want to find the week of the year. So order date. Now I don't use spaces in my field names like a good little boy. If you put spaces in your field names, you have problems all over the place. All right, hit okay. All right, and now let's run that. And there you go. There's the week of the year that that date falls on. So for example, here's January 1st, 2022. Yes, I use the ISO date standard. That's because I have students in every country in the world, pretty much, and it's not confusing which one is which, right? That's year, month, day. Got a whole separate video on that if you want to learn more about it. Got to prevent international incidents, right? Okay, now here's the interesting part. Some people, depending on their accounting, might change what they consider to be the first week of the year. Some businesses consider the first week of the year to be the first full week of the year. In other words, if you take a look at January 22, for example, January 1st falls right there, and then the first full week of the year is that. So this technically would be in the last week of 2021, okay? So how do you change that setting? Well, there's a couple different settings. If you look at date part, okay, there's, there's a bunch of different stuff here. We know interval, right? We know date. Then there's two optional parts. First day of the week, that doesn't apply to this function. That has to deal with if you're dealing with the weekday, 
the day of the week, Monday through Sunday. I've got a whole separate video on day of the week if you want to go watch that one. In fact, I just released it a couple days ago. All right, there's weekday. Now, in the weekday function, and also in date part, you can change what the first day of the week is. You can make it Sunday, which is the default, Monday, Saturday, whatever, okay? So that is what this parameter is for. What we want is this guy, but you can't leave that blank. Unlike VBA, if you're using a query, you can't leave this guy blank. So you have to use the default at least, which the default is Sunday or 1. Remember that. Okay, but for the first week of the year argument, there's a couple of different things. You, you want to use either one, two, or three. Don't worry about this one. All right, first January 1st, which means the first week in which January 1st occurs. That's the default. Okay, then there's first four days, which is two, which is start with the first week that has at least four days in it. I rarely see that one, but I see this one a lot, right? Start with the first full week of the year. Okay, usually with like payroll and stuff, they, they use this one a lot. So if I want to come in here now, design view, if I want to change this guy, okay, remember you got to go comma one here. We can't use those VB constants like VB Friday, VB Monday, unless we're actually in VB. You can't put those in a query, you'll get a, an enter parameter value, which you don't want that. So put a comma one pretty much always here. Then comma three, for example, is use the first full week. Okay, hit okay, and now run it. And now you can see that this guy actually falls in week 52 of the previous year. I know it's crazy, but that's how they do it sometimes in accounting and payroll and things with explosive parts and chemical structures and all that stuff. Okay, all right, but I'm gonna go back to just the default regular one. I almost never use that unless it's a, a custom build for someone. Okay. So, how do we throw this into a form? Well, let's just say this is query one. That's okay. And I'm going to borrow this right here. I'm going to borrow that. Copy. Okay. Why? Because we're going to put it in a form field in a minute. Right? Customer form. Go to orders. All right. I want to know what day or what week of the year this order falls on. All right? Design view. We'll slide this over a little bit like that. I'll grab another text box. Drop it right next to it. Get rid of that label. Shrink you up a little bit. Oh, 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 I accidentally grabbed the notes field. We don't want to do that. Click and be very careful. There we go. All right. Double click on it right here. Week of year. And my control source will be equals that. That date part function that I borrowed a minute ago. Okay. Close that. Save it. Close it. Open it back up. Boom. Week number three. Okay. And that makes sense because the first would be the only one in that week. So then the second through, where's that calendar? The second through the eighth is week two. The 14th would be the Friday of week three, the second Friday. And I like to make these gray because people need to know they can't change that. Any field that people can't edit, I like to make gray, like I did with the order ID up here. See that? Now, for those of you that do know a little VBA, let's say you want to, um, let's say you want to display that. All right, I'll just throw it in a button here. Let's let's take this button. I'm going to copy and paste it. And I'll just put a little button right there next to it. We'll get rid of that label. And put a little question mark in there. All right, just to show you what you can do a little bit differently with this. All right, right click, build event. If you've never done any VBA before, oh, this one's got this one's got a a, a macro in it. Some some of these buttons when I was making them for the beginner students and the very early ones, I put macros in here. I try to avoid macros if I can. I'm going to go to event and get rid of this on-click embedded macro. Delete. Don't like that. And then I'll change the name of this button to uh, week of year button, or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now, as I was saying a minute ago, before I was so rudely interrupted, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click, go to build event. That'll bring up my VBA code builder, this guy. If you've never done any VBA before, it's not scary. Go watch my free intro to VBA class. It's 20 minutes long. It'll teach you all the basics. It's real simple. And if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you'll know that with just a couple little lines of code here and there, you can do some really cool stuff. But anyways, let's say here, I just want a message box. Okay. Uh, this order falls in week. And then I can use my date part, right? Date part, WW. 
Okay, order date is the field. But now, see, I'm getting the see, I'm getting a little helper thing popping up underneath there. It's got first day of week, VB Sunday, comma. I can look. I can actually use VB Sunday because this is VB. You can't use these constants. They're called VB Sunday. You can't use those in queries and forms. You have to use the numbers, which I personally hate. But comma, and then use. 1st January 1st, which is the default. It tells you what the default is right over here. See, there's the default. Okay, and because these are in brackets, the square brackets, that means they're optional. That's the default that will be used if you don't specify it. See, but you don't need all that stuff. Those are the default values. All right, so this will message box that. Right, I just wanted to show you the VB syntax. Save it. Close this. Close this. Open it back up again. Click the button. Pink. Order falls in week three which is totally unnecessary because we got that. But I, I just wanted to show you the VB, okay? All right, sue me. <laughs> now, if you want to learn a lot more about date functions in Microsoft Access, I've got my Access Expert Level 27 and 28 classes. It's parts one and two of my date time function review. I cover everything there is to know about working with dates and times in Microsoft Access. We do all kinds of different stuff. There's 27 and where's 28? It's over here. Okay, there it is. All right, 28, date time functions part two, date add, date diff, date part, date serial, all kinds of stuff. How to display ordinals, first, second, third, etc. Okay. And I got this thing called the Access Date Time Seminar, which I cover everything there is to know about working with dates in Microsoft Access. All kinds of cool stuff in here. All kinds of functions we write. Right? Workday function, my network day function. It's all kinds of cool stuff where you can specify like how many work days are there between this date and that date. We could put a list of holidays in there. All kinds of cool stuff. There's things that Excel has that, that Access doesn't have. Because nobody likes Access at over at Microsoft. Very small group of people. Everyone goes to Excel. <laughs> All right. So check those out. So there's your week of the year function. All right. Date part. And I uh, hope you learned something today. Be sure to like and share this video. And if you have any questions, you know what to do. Post them down below. We'll see you next time. Hope you learned something.